Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today I'm back down at the Lambs Yacht Centre in Jacksonville, Florida, working with Hanson Yachts. And this time I'm checking out Mike Webster's latest listing, a 1994 Ocean Alexander 423 Classico Trawler Yacht. First impressions are always key with any boat, and this one does not disappoint at all. She had the hull professionally painted in 2022 by Huckins Yacht Corporation. All the woodwork's in pristine condition, and all that superstructure's got such a shine off the polish. From a price perspective, at the time of shooting this video, she was up for sale for $239,000. And she measured in at just over 42 feet in length, just under 15 feet beam. But crucially, I want to point out, this one is capable of doing a great loop. The mast and a hardtop enclosure, that all drops down to give you a lower air draft, and that way you can make sure you can get through all the bridge clearance restrictions. And as I go to make my way on board, one of the other features that I really love with this yacht is the amount of handholds that you have inside and out. It always feels like there's something you can grab onto, which makes it far easier for you and your family to walk around on board. I also like the fact that this one does have a lower helm, and that lower helm has got immediate deck access. Makes it easier both when you're in the marinas, but also if you're going to be going through lock gates as well. And I want to zoom in on the deck surface that's on this yacht. It's got a non-slip deck, but it works really well and effective no matter where you are. And as I make my way up to the bow, you'll see we've got an electric windlass here. That windlass does have a winch drum on it as well. But you also get a close-up of all that woodwork that's been freshly restored. We also have a deck wash system up here. And then as I pan that camera around, you're going to see the timeless classic design that this one offers, as well as that custom canopy that's been included with the flybridge. And as I head aft down the port side, you start to get a sense of just how much space you have for walking down the deck. Very, very little obstruction for your feet. There's also plenty of handholds. Everybody on board is going to feel very safe and secure with this one. And you'll notice over the aft deck, we've got the rigid inflatable tender stored here, as well as some large fenders. We also have fender baskets on the transom, as well as a man overboard recovery system. And that tender can easily be launched and retrieved thanks to the deck crane that we have, as well as an extended bathing platform that makes it easy to step on and off the tender itself. And if we go and take a close up of the framework that we have on the hard top, you'll see that this does have the hinge mount brackets. This allows it all to be dropped down easily. I'll also show you that you can see part of the mast from here, but I'll show you the mast in more detail once we get around the other side. And making my way back to the stern, underneath that man overboard recovery system, you'll see we've got the fresh water deck wash system here. But we've also got a very large hold that's been used in the lazarette for storage. Whether you're doing a great loop, whether you're looking at cruising the Caribbean islands, Either way, storage is always a premium, so whenever you see you've got plenty of storage options, it just makes it feel like this is a boat you could easily spend extended periods of time on board without any issues. And as I make my way down here, you see we've got access to a lot of the steering gear for any service and repairs or upgrades. You also have access to sight lines for the tanks. And we even have a spare anchor with chain and road down here as well. And this would be another good spot that you could put additional ropes and fenders in while the boat was cruising under okay. And then if we pop back up to the deck level, I'll take you up to that flybridge. And I really like how accessible the flybridge is. This one's been equipped with they're obviously cruising from the flybridge rather than the lower helm, but your friends and family can join you up here. And from this angle, you get better access to that mast and you see that this one drops down so you don't have to worry about any height restrictions. And as to the enclosure itself, I really was impressed with how clear the screens are. There's a lot of times when I'm on some of these boats, they get faded out and you can hardly see through them, but this one's immaculate. And the canopy's designed where you can roll it up in sections, you can remove it in sections, or obviously you can remove it completely. You also have really good headroom in here, considering it's got a solid hard top. I'm six foot two, didn't have any issues. It's got lights mounted into it overhead for whenever you're cruising at night or if you're anchored at night. You got storage underneath the seats. You also have that cockpit table so you can enjoy meals and snacks out here. And then you've also got the helm, which it feels like it's slap bang in the middle of the boat. You're just as close to the bow as you are to the stern, the port as you are to starboard, and it makes it really easy for doing any sort of close quarter maneuvering as well as navigating in general. And here you're going to have your full engine instrumentation. You've also got twin Garmin multifunction displays. You got Furuno radar, you got your auto helm with the speed log and depth, and you've also got the compass as well. 
And also note the framework that's involved with this hard top. Now, sometimes when I see these canopy enclosures, I think if the boat was ever to go offshore, you'd be in trouble. But I can't say that with this one. It's a very, very strong yacht inside and out. I also like the fact you've got two seats at the helm. I always picture this as being a husband and wife team cruising. And it's nice to have your partner right there with you. And then if we pop back down, the easiest way to get into the lower accommodation is through the door next to the lower helm. And this one actually boasts a door on both the port and starboard side. So again, if you're doing close quarter manoeuvring, if you want to communicate with MD on the deck, it's easy enough to do. And once you step on board, I just love the woodwork that's in here. It just feels like a classic trawler yacht in all the right ways. The lower helm does have VHF radio, speed log depth. It's got your full engine instrumentation as well. And there's plenty of room here if you did want to upgrade the electronics so you can cruise from down below as well as from up on the flybridge. The helm in the saloon's got a kind of open plan design to it. And underneath here is where you're going to find the engines. But there is actually an easier way to access the engines, which I'll show you later on. And from a fresh air and ventilation perspective, I like the fact that not only do you have the opening doors, but almost all the windows in here are opening as well. And for extended cruising, you see we've got additional refrigeration here. But this is also portable that you could bring this up to the flybridge if you wanted to as well, if you're going to fill this up with drinks and snacks. There's another drinks fridge underneath the helm seat. And then we've got that L-shaped seat in the area in the saloon with a really nice cockpit table in the middle. And that table does have the high-low feature, so you can raise and lower it to suit. And then on the port side, we've got an additional storage cabinet. And if you really wanted to, there's room up top. You can mount a TV on here if you wanted to instead. But for all the doors on the inside, I like the fact that all the drawers, lockers, cabinets, they all have a secure way of locking in place. That way when the boat is cruising, you don't need to worry about anything popping open, anything falling out. And this is a two cabin version with the owner's stateroom aft. And this is virtually full beam. I like the fact it's got a large island berth, easily accessible on either side. And as a pan round, you can just see at first glance all the storage options we have from hanging lockers, drawers, but all the woodwork is in such good condition. And we have natural light available from the large windows that we have on either side, but you've also got opening hatches overhead. And these hatches do have that mesh screen cover, so that way you can open them up and you can get fresh air in here without having to worry about bugs and debris coming in. And to continue that woodwork theme, even hanging lockers, whenever you open them, you'll see these are all cedar lined on the inside. And this one in particular it kind of has a his and hers feel to it. There's two of them right side by side, but plenty of space for extended cruising. And there's even a drawer at the bottom, and that way you can turn this into almost like somewhere to put your shoes. Pretty much the list of configuration options is endless. And then as you'd expect from the owner's stateroom, this one is actually en suite. If I make my way over and close the door that leads into the cabin, you'll see there's a door behind here that leads into the head compartment itself. And with this head compartment configuration, I like the fact that the toilet and the shower is separate. I always feel like it's easier to use both the toilet and the shower when it's configured this way. You also have plenty of storage in here for your toiletries and personal belongings. And there's enough space and headroom in here for that shower is actually something you could use. And before we leave this stateroom, I want to point out another section where in the port quarter, we've got a desk area, which you could use for your laptop and office equipment and things like that. But it can also double up as a vanity station as well. It's even got plenty of mains power next to it to make it even easier and more accessible. And then moving forward, as I make my way through the saloon past the hill, You'll see the galley on board on this one is located on the port side. And you go down a couple of steps to get to the galley. What that means is there's tremendous headroom down here for preparing all your meals. Again, you've got large opening windows, which is ideal, especially if you're cooking. You've got plenty of countertop space, plenty of storage space. You've got your convection microwave oven. You then have an electric three burner stovetop. And this has got a grill and oven down below as well. And notice how clean everything is in here presented for sale. And next to that, you're going to find that we've got both a fridge and freezer. And opposite next to the helm is where you're going to find the main breaker panel for all the main electrics and electronics on board. And then further forward as we head towards the bow, on the starboard side is where you're going to find the guest head compartment. And again, this one has got the toilet and the shower separate. 
And the owner's device I've been using the shower in this one is partly to do with storage, especially since it's obviously self-draining. But as with the head compartment in the aft cabin, there's also plenty of storage in here for toiletries and personal belongings. And that hatch leads to the electrics behind the helm, so if you ever wanted to do any repairs or upgrades, they're easily accessible. And this is probably a good time to point out this one's equipped with a 50 gallon holding tank. She's got 160 gallons of fresh water and she actually carries 480 gallons of fuel. And then we have the second cabin on the bow and in the bow here we've got two single berths. As with the rest of the yacht, the woodwork's in immaculate condition. There's plenty of drawers, lockers, cabinets in here too for all your storage. There's opening portholes on either side. There's also access right on the bow that would take you straight into the anchor locker if you needed to. And obviously this yacht is fully air conditioned as well. And you can see some of those vents too. And I mentioned there was an easy way to get into the engines. And that's if you lift up the steps that lead into this cabin. There's like a crawl space in here that leads straight into the engine room. And this one is powered by twin Caterpillar 3208N. These are 210 horse naturally aspirated diesel engines. These have been well maintained. There's full service records, oil change schedules, things like that available upon request from the broker. We also have a diesel generator in here. And all your maintenance and service components are easily accessible. And as you probably heard me say in some of my other videos, the easier it is to service and maintain, the more likelihood it's been carried out. And with this yacht, there's no excuse not for carrying out the maintenance. Things like your filters are easily accessible, all your oil and water separators. And these engines have got less than 3,800 hours on the clock. And I'll give you a comfortable cruising speed of somewhere around 8 knots. And if you notice, if you look at the roof on here, this has got the floor that leads into the saloon. So if you were looking at doing any major engine repairs, servicing or upgrades, you've got plenty of access to do it from up top too. I'd like to thank Mike for the opportunity. Come on board, check this one out and share it with you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, hit that like and subscribe button. It really makes a difference. I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.